Introduction how to keep your resolutions. We usually give up on our resolutions because once the initial enthusiasm has died down, our motivation collapses and we no longer have the capacity to achieve it. To avoid this problem, you have to go slowly and with the right method. In this book, you will learn what is the method to keep good habits, how to change your behavior, what are the three factors that determine your behavior, why is motivation not enough, why is it important to know your current abilities, what incentive is needed to adopt a new habit, how do you design a good incentive, our answers to these questions are easy to understand, simple to implement, and quick to execute. Ready to keep your resolutions. Let's go. What's the method for keeping good habits? There is a gap between what we want to do and what we actually do. And this gap is not due to a lack of willpower or motivation but to your method. First of all, stop blaming yourself if you haven't been able to keep your resolutions in the past because it's probably due to a bad method. And second, you need to take your long-term goal and break it down into manageable components. How do you change your behavior? Changing a person's behavior requires more than just providing information. There are three ways to change behavior. Sudden disclosures, changes in your environment, and small changes in your existing habits. But sudden revelations are impossible to bring about consciously. The same is true for your environment, over which you do not have absolute control. What remains are the small habits that you can control. Small habits are small actions that take a few minutes to perform and are easy to accomplish. The more you do it, the better you feel and the more you create a new habit. What are the three factors that determine your behavior? All behavior stems from three factors. Motivation, your desire to do something because it feels good. Capacity, your ability to do something. And incentives, the stimuli that make you do it. For example, with the goal of getting people to donate money to support the victims of an earthquake. The motivation of the future donor to help is strong because of the relay of information by the media. The ability to donate money via SMS is simple, and receiving a text message invitation to donate was a good incentive. The more these three variables coincide, the more likely the desired behavior is to be achieved. And the easier the behavior is to achieve, the less motivation and incentive is needed to make it happen. Why is motivation not enough? Basically, motivation can help you move mountains. But the problem is that those one-time peaks of motivation are great for achieving difficult things once. But trying to achieve something like losing weight takes time, effort, and constant motivation. If the effort can be made enough times with your motivation, then you will get your result. In other words, focus on the simple effort and not the result so you don't lose your motivation. Why is it important to know your current abilities? To adopt a good habit, you need to make your behavior as simple as possible by knowing your current abilities. And the best way to do this is to consider the difficulty of the behavior you want to adopt. Several factors can come into play, time, money, physical ability, mental ability, etc. For example, you want to do 20 push-ups a day. Time and money are not an issue for you. Physical ability is a problem because you haven't done push-ups in a long time. Mental capacity is also a problem because you don't find it fun. So, if you set this goal under these conditions, it is likely that you will not perform this challenging behavior every day but only when you are motivated. To be able to achieve this goal every day under its current condition, set a goal of doing two push-ups a day instead. What incentive is needed to adopt a new habit? There are three types of incentives. Incentives from your external environment. For example, the light turns green, so I hit the gas. These are independent of us and are not always well designed. Incentives from your internal environment. For example, my stomach is growling so I eat. These incentives are also independent of us and are usually well designed. And the incentives to action through the routines you already perform. For example, every time you flush the toilet, you do two push-ups. Rely primarily on this to establish a new behavior and, with practice, it will become second nature to you. How do you design a good incentive? To create the best possible incentive, consider the location, frequency, and theme of the chosen routine. Ask yourself the following questions about the routine you think you might want to choose. Does the location make sense to carry out my new habit? For example, after you flush the toilet, it's the perfect time to do push-ups if you have the space and opportunity to do this behavior in your bathroom. How often do you want to do your new habit? For example, if it's once, do this new habit after you drop the kids off at school. If it's several times, do this new habit after going to the bathroom. Does the new habit fit into the theme of the chosen routine? For example, if you want to drink a glass of water in the morning, graft this new habit onto the time you water your flowers daily. Some habits are obvious to associate but others are difficult to identify. That's why it's important to have fun testing several hypotheses in order to find what works best for you. Conclusion Creating a new habit is not only a matter of willpower, but also of method. The key is to start small by finding the right balance between your motivation and your ability to adopt a new behavior. If you like the summary, click on one of our partner links to discover tiny habits. The Small Changes That Change Everything by B.J. Fogg in ebook, book or audiobook format. And if you're not interested in reading further, 
we recommend you discover Nudge, Improving Decisions About Health. Wealth and Happiness by Richard H. Thaler Cassar Sunstein. Introduction, How to Avoid Bad Decisions, Mistakes, Restrictions or Prohibitions. Thanks to Nudge, you will be able to make the right choice more often in order to feel better in your daily life. In this book, you will learn, why don't we always make the best decision? What are the two ways of thinking of the human mind? Why are some decisions wrong? How can nudges prevent you from making bad decisions? When to implement a nudge in your life? How can you achieve your goals with nudge? Our answers to these questions are easy to understand, simple to implement and quick to execute, ready to avoid bad decisions. Let's go.